Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Sunless Skies. In today's episode we are going to be tracking down the signal boxes for the fatalistic signalman. I have a rough idea where some of these are. I have been to them all in the past but I just completely forgotten what they were. I know Cuddlescombe is one of them. I'm pretty sure Addison Wick is another which is down here. Uh, one of them's by Leadbeater and Stone Rods. Eleanor Green. And then there's one down by Lustrum. Which I'm going to assume is this one, considering it's got the, the gravestone there. So, we are going to be travelling around an awful lot in this episode. So, let's see if we can get ourselves some sort of prospects here. So, there's one here for Bronzewood for Port Avon. We have to go near Port Avon. So, we may as well pick that up. Do I actually have the five Bronzewood? I do. Make sure I leave enough room for fuel and supplies, otherwise we will be in trouble. But get that. And there's another one for five barrels of hours to the lead beater and stain rod. Nature reserve, but I think we're full on... We are. Let's get rid of that one. And in prospect, and we'll get that one as well, and we will pick it up. The five barrels of ours. Two, three, four, five. Now, the rest of my car cargo hold is going to have to be fuel, I'm afraid. Uh, otherwise, we're going to run out. And that would be terrible. We do not want to run out of fuel in the middle of nowhere. There we go. Okay, so I think the first thing that we need to do is have a look at poor Prosper, because I. Well, I'm guessing they'll weigh the same. Oh, wait, ten? Wait, five? Oh, okay. So, yeah, let's get rid of the bronze wood first, because it's heavier, and that's going to affect our ability. I mean, we're going past Cold's Comb anyway. Cold's Comb? Oh, no, because that is some wick as well. So, we could go... Oh, man, we're going to be going all over the place, aren't we? Let's go. We could go to Cold's Comb first, but... Uh, there is no perfect route here, unless I go... Eleanor Green. We basically just have to go everywhere, don't we? It'd be nice to start in one end and then work our way all the way around to try and get them all, but I think we're gonna it might be better off going there, going back to New Winchester, going there, going back. But let's let's get Cuddles come straight away, just to make sure that I'm not looking for the wrong thing. Because the amount of times I've done something like that. I I've done it a lot, let, let's face it. So, I've been playing an awful lot of Surviving Mars recently. Uh, it's every other day on my channel right now, and I know a lot of people are liking it. And I'm not sure if there is a viewership overlap between my Sunless Sky stuff and my Surviving Mars stuff. I'm, I'm probably going to assume the answer to that question is no. They are two very different kinds of games. But I'm having a problem in Sun... Uh, sun Skies? No, I'm not having a problem in Sunless Skies. I'm having a problem in Surviving Mars, where I'm, I've got to a point... Well, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, I've built the dome. I have the stuff. I have people. I'm like, have I just got to survive now? And I'm really struggling to think of things to say while playing that game. So, I'm not sure if it's going to live on the channel forever, if I'm going to finish it or not, if I'm just going to move on to something else. I was told about another game that the name of it has just completely left my brain. It's a paradox game survival village thing. A lot like Frostpunk with the zombies. Um, surviving the Aftermath, I think it was called, something like that. And I am very much interested in that. Ah, is this the one where the two guys are beating each other to death? Uh, yeah, okay, tell them to stop. Uh, See, so steal supplies while they're distracted. We'll, we'll invite one to join the crew. And a Sky Story, a Tale of Terror, and a crew. I'll ignore the category. But yes, I may, I may swap to something else, unsure. If it's super popular, I mean, I feel the videos I've done for this week, I've pre-recorded them all. I really struggle to make them interesting. But I am horrendously critical of my own work. I More than once I've recorded something and just gone, nah, I can't upload that, that's awful. But, you know, if people like it, I'll carry on doing it. I don't mind, I'll think of things to say. I do enjoy just rambling. My, uh, most of my Sun in the Sky stuff is just me rambling. 
Uh, the signal box is shrouded in grey. Close up you see that the box is covered in delicate webs, studded with cocoons. From the blue and white pattern of one bundle it appears a spider has trapped a teapot. Inside, beneath a desk covered with rusted levers, is a luggage trunk. Captains in dire need can borrow from the cash inside, but custom dictates they must later replenish it. So we can deposit the signalman at the spidered signal box. He steps from your engine's footplate onto the signal box's porch. I'm not an admirer of spiders, if I'm frank. Anyway, I shan't be long. Cup of tea? He brushes away the worst of the cobwebs and removes several spiders using a jam jar he keeps in a drawer for this exact purpose. This place will be the death of me, he mutters. He brews you a cup of tea in a battered old kettle on a battered old stove. Then he tips it away and brews you another one that doesn't have boiled spiders in it. Examining the Skyfarer's cash and the accompanying ledger, he tuts. Someone's taking out, out without giving back. Stupid. Sooner or later, the borrower will get their scent. Oh. Anyway, finished your tea? You return to your locomotive. I've heard a lot about this borrower. You hear it when you're going between zones. I've yet to come foul of it, though, but maybe that's because I have not stolen from a signal box. Uh, let's not raid the cachet. We don't need to, but we could read the ledger. The handwriting is poor, but legible. Captain Fulcar deposited fuel in the cache, hoping to gain good luck. There is a column for miscellaneous notes. The writing is blotched and smeared as if the writer had tried to wipe tears from the page. What is legible speaks of a place as dark as sleep, as quiet as a forgotten story. They barely escaped. They want to return. That's ominous as all hell. Wonderful. <laughs> they want to return. Where could that be? Oh, we're going to swing by the memorial to the unknown rat. And then go to Addison Wick. I'm unsure if I want to cut much out of this. I may decide to cut stuff out. I don't have a lot of time to record the video. Normally, I've, what I've started to get in the habit of doing is giving myself an hour, recording an hour, cutting it down to, you know, 20 minutes or half an hour, or whatever whatever the interesting bits are, cutting out all of the, the travelling of the game. Because nine times out of ten, nothing happens. It's just me talking. And as exciting as that can be, let's just slam the brakes on here, get a little bit of... The rather good old nod. I do love this statue. I, I come past it every single time. Yeah, excuse me, getting a drink. There we go. I, apparently, I think there are more wonders I haven't found. I mean, there's Regent's Tears up there. There's a big old chunk of the map I haven't even looked at yet. Well, at some point, I will go out of my way to fully uncover everything. But I think after I've done the Fatalistic Signalman storyline, my next person is the incognito princess who is apparently the captivating princess i've said this in a previous episode and uh she has played a prominent part in the uh exceptional story for this month or was it last month hang on what's the date it's this month <laughs> i've just finished it uh, at the weekend i'm recording this on monday so i finished it saturday that video will be going up on thursday or if you're watching this way after the time where I've recorded it, it'll be in the playlist with all the other Fallen London exceptional stories. And if you haven't seen them, please go and watch them. The stories, the writing is wonderful. I uh, very much enjoy the exceptional stories. It's currently Hallowmas, also known as Halloween, in uh, Fallen London. Everyone's wearing masks. I do love a good mask. I haven't actually had a chance to sit down and look at it properly yet. My time is being very much taken away from me right now. But I am interested in learning more about that. I may be sending out requests and stuff to players. If anyone's interested in it, let me know. You can find out what my Fallen London name is on my Fallen London videos. I think it's Celine. So normally or weird? I can't remember if I spelled it weird. I think the way I normally spell it was taken. But uh, yeah, if you're interested in that, let me know. I'll be more than happy to uh, oblige if I can. Right, what was I doing here? Prospects. Bizarre. Bronzewood. Bargains available, Bronzewood. No. Did I? Have I done a dumb here? Oh, it was Bronzewood for Port Avon, not Port Prosper. Oh dear, somebody was probably shouting at me for that the entire time. 
Um, I've driven straight past. I've driven straight past Port Haven. God damn it. Uh, okay. Well, you know, while I'm here, we're going by that way anyway, right? Oh, but then Lustrum's down here, so we're going to add some wake We can pop around here and then go to there, then go to the Carillion. All the way up to here. Then go to the... Oh. Oh no, I've done a dumb. I've definitely done a dumb. Okay, right. I have a plan. We're going to go down to... Boop, boop, boop. Uh, okay. Yes, plan. A plan. What I'm going to do is I'm going to travel down this way. I'm going to go to Addison Wick. Then when I'm at Addison Wick, we're going to drop on the signal box. We'll go to the one near Lustrum. From Lustrum, we'll go to Carillion up to New Winchester. Go to Port Avon. When we're at Port Avon, we'll do the, the Bronzewood. And then we'll go to the Leadbeater Steam Rods and do the other prospect. Perfect! Let's just completely ignore the fact that I drove a oh, wind. Wind has caught the dam. Oh, balls. No, 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 no. Oh, God, wind, take me now. Oh, oh, oh wow, actually, this is going to get me there well quick. The uh, later, sucker. Oh. No, 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 no. Okay. We're fine. I admit, could have gone worse, I suppose. I suppose yeah, it could have gone worse. Interact. What am I interacting with? The War of Fossils? Okay, I don't think I've ever seen this before. When settlers arrived in the Reach, miners flocked to this frozen rock, lured by the promise of hours stored in its core. An eruption of Cantankery has left it in, it, it in its current mangled state. A makeshift graveyard stands at the lip of the rock, a memorial and a warning. Pay your respects, like the lanterns. Lanterns doused by the sleek mark the ramshackle graves. Relighting them would commemorate the dead, but might disturb any cantankery that still slumber here. I will like those lanterns. We must remember our dead. You are able to dig out a dozen or more lanterns from the muddy sleet. You find tinder to light them and rope to lash them to the wooden posts that mark the graves. Some of the posts are marked with black crosses, indicating a member of the Windward Corp of Overmen and Shotfirers. A stoker sings a brief and dirge-like hymn. We've gained some reputation with the Tacties, and our terror has fallen. That's not mine for <laughs> unclaimed hours. That would be slightly disrespectful, would it not? Addison Wick is just down here. My my ship is slowly. Is it taking food? I think it, I don't know what it's doing. It's bad. It's doing bad things. Whatever whatever's happening is bad. Well, we managed to get across there incredibly quickly. I wish those winds propped up more often. Preferably in the direction I'm travelling, not in the direction against where I'm travelling, because that would suck quite badly. I sure hope this is one of the signal boxes, and I'm not just misremembering. Nope, 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 nope. Scribe, spinster, go away. Good. I don't want to fight a scribe. Spinster, I don't like them. They're horrible. This looks like a... Oh, yeah, it is. Where's the... Can I go over this or under this? Or No, I don't think I can. Addison Wick. Can I interact with it? There we go. This signal box has been blasted by weapon fire. Despite the holes, the shattered tiles, the fractured beams, it still has enough structural integrity for you to climb inside without risk. It was made with care and pride. Inside, beneath a desk covered in rusted levers, is a luggage trunk. Captains and Diane can borrow from the cash inside, but custom detests they must replenish it later. Let's deposit the signalman at the scorched signal box. He wrinkles his nose at the old, sooty scent of smoke that still clings to the place. Some idiot left a candle burning here a year or so ago. Fire made a right mess before the peacock wind smothered it. Then marauders started using the old girl for target practice. He pats the wall sympathetically. It took me a month to fix her up again, and I've never got rid of the smell. He gives the signal box a good airing, opening the windows and letting the biting wind blow through. 
Shivering, he flicks through the ledger attached to the Skyfarer's cache and gives a satisfied nod. Before he leaves, he shuts the windows and blows out the lamp. Can't be too careful. Can I read the ledger? Nah, because I read the ledger before, I can't do it. Okay. Right, so our next... Oh dear. Oh no, we can go under it, it's fine. Our next location is through... Through this, I could, I, oh, part of me wants to go the way I already know, and that's assuming that that is open. Oh, uh, we, we've got enough fuel, right? Does Lustrum sell fuel and stuff? Fuel and supplies, so we can just get some at Lustrum, it'll be fine. Let's go exploring. Because this never ends badly, does it? Every time I ever go exploring anywhere, I end up getting my head blown off. But nothing will ever be quite so bad as the Blue Kingdom. The Blue Kingdom was definitely a problem. be here. Absolutely nothing is the answer to that question. There was a prolonged silence and I was expecting something to show up on the screen, but it never did. Seemingly a problem. Hopefully it's just a passage that's going to lead us from there to where we need to be. Let's try. It'd be really nice if it was. To tell you the truth. Last thing I need is to get lost in the reach. What is this? A celestial ruin. The heavens are pocked with tumbled ruins from aeons ago. Some are melancholy, some malevolent, some hide treasures, others danger. Here is an ivied ruin of the reach, graceful with arches and bristled with sprouts of moss and mushrooms. I mean, let's decipher the ancient inscriptions. Weathered markings freckle the stones. The inscriptions are written in the language of the suns. You decipher what you can. They hint at a number of feuding solar alliances or conjunctions. Each conjunction upholds a different philosophy, as obtuse and fiery as the stars themselves. Hmm. How intriguing. Oh god, I'm starting to worry that this is going to be a dead end. No? Okay, I think we're okay. Okay, well either way, we're almost at Lustrum. Um, I am tempted to stop off at Lustrum and pick up some fuel. The problem is with forgetting to do the prospects is I'm now carrying more weight, which is using more fuel. Very annoying. Okay, so we're coming up on the next signal box? I don't actually the mystery signal box. I don't know what this one's called. I wonder if it has an interesting name. But luckily, ah, oh, is that a marauder? Really? Oh, for God's sake. Oh. I... Still alive. I missed. Oh. Ow. Bloody hell, getting hit by a goddamn marauder. Uh, let's just fix, let's just fix our hole. I took a bit of hits there, so... Right. An abandoned signal box. Window cracks have excreted a filling of moss green dust. Once white paint is yellowed and peeling, the signal box possesses a faded dignity, like a beleaguered butler. It was designed with pride. To be part of that great folly, the Isenbard line. Inside, beneath the desk, covered with rusted levers, is a luggage trunk. Yeah, right though. Enough times, I think, at this point. Deposit the signalman at the battered signal box. The latch is broken, allowing the signal box door to bang in the wind. I won't be long, he promises, if you don't mind waiting. Inside, skeletal leaves are scattered across the floor. Locating a broom, the signalman sweeps it clear. Then he turns his attention to the door. Repairing it is an awkward job for one pair of hands, so you lend him yours. The two of you work in easy silence, one holding while the other hammers, one measuring while the other trims. When you have rehung the door, it swings easily on its freshly oiled hinges, the latch dropping firmly into place. Good job well done, he says. 
as if that is thanks enough. Shutting the door carefully behind him, he hops back onto your locomotive. Wonderful. What is the name of this place? Welping Rest. What a horrible name. Right, so if I swing through Carillion... Get to Port Avon. Ed Beater and Stainrod, and then Eleanor's Green. Okay, well, let's head off now. Hopefully nothing horrendous happens. You are not where you thought you were. The sky is wrong. This is not where you were meant to be. Was it a trick of the mists? Has the wind carried you astray? Have the heavens themselves turned on their axis? Good choice here. We can use two fuel to double back, painstakingly retrace your path, or we can press on. Push forward into stranger skies and hope that somewhere beyond you'll find familiar territories again. I'm going to press on. A lonely house emerges from the mists. Networks of dead ivy still cleave to the walls. The windows and doors are open and dark. No smoke rises from the chimney. Wordlessly, your crew tether your engine, ignoring your orders. Some of them gather their belongings and prepare to disembark. This is our stop, one of them says. Oh no. You stand in the exterior hatch and raise your fists. No one will pass you. I mean, I can try, but the failure is probably worse, so I think I'm just going to let them go. Silently, the affected crew file off your engine, with their possessions slung over their shoulders. Their feet crunch along the gravel drive, and one by one, they enter the lonely house. When the last one passes inside, the door swings shut, blown by a sudden wind. The mists fold in, your engine lurches, suddenly adrift in the sky. The house is gone. We lost seven crew. We are now going to be in the emergency... Oh god. Oh, the stole, dear. We are going to be in the emergency crew range. We're being chased by a goddamn cantankery, aren't we? Get out of here. I didn't even get that far away from where I was. Go away. Bloody cantankery. Another celestial ruin. Let's tarry amidst the ruins. Uh, we can scribble a few verses, search for a memento, we'll make repairs to your engine. Let's uh, gain a sky story. Scribble a few verses. Your terror has fallen. Wonderful. Leave me be, terrible creature of the sky. I think I'm going to stop at New Winchester in order to get some more crew, since most of them just upped and buggered off. Not the best. I will admit. Quite annoying, in fact. Okay, so we're coming upon Port Avon. <laughs> the original destination of my little idea. It's only taken the entire episode to get here. Well, not the entire episode, I'm not quite done yet, but you get my meaning. We are going to get here, we're going to sell the bronze wood, I'm going to buy some more fuel and supplies. I got four more crew from New Winchester as I drove past. Didn't get a very good roll. Yeah, better than nothing. So let's go to the shops, the bazaar. We can sell. Oh, hang on a minute. Selling sacks of verdant seeds. Either way, let's uh, sell this bronze wood. Even though I probably would have been better off using it for the uh, dusking deep thing, but you know what? Money's more important, right? So let's sell it. Oh, we're getting two supplies for that. Oh, well, that's brilliant. Uh, let's buy some fuel to go along with it. I think that should be more than enough. And from here, we will head to Leadbeaters and Stainwells to drop off the barrels of unseasoned hours. That should give us a little bit more money. And from there, we will head to the final stop. 
the signal box, I should say. <laughs> I've had a sudden idea. If I go round this way, I can go into Eleanor's Green and then go to the Sledvias and Stainworlds. And I usually avoid that annoying wind that's down that middle section. Every time I try to get to Sledvias and Stainworlds, there's a bloody wind there and it pushes me back. But if we go around this way, it'll be better. Here we are. We've come up to the fight. Whoa, okay, that one's there. Green. Can I inspect it? No? Oh god. I'm crashing repeatedly. Somebody's having a gunfight off to the side here. Who's fighting here? Take this count? Ah, I'll leave him to it. The window frames sev The window frames serve as trellis. There we go, my brain completely fried on that sense. Circumnavigating the signal box. The plant's stem resembles thick Thigh thick twine, giving the building the appearance of a hurriedly wrapped parcel. Inside, beneath the desk, blah blah blah, deposit the signalman at the overgrown signal box. Look at the state of this place, he grumbles. Cut it away and it grows back. Fruitless bloody job. Despite his complaint, he prunes away at the vines as neatly as a widow at her window box. Some recent visitor has left cigarette butts and unwashed cutlery scattered about. The signalman tidies them away. Then, taking a key from his pocket, he unlocks a drawer and removes a stuffed envelope from it. It contains old newspaper clippings about the construction of the Isenbard line. Their tone is breathless, exulting, and vision of the quixotic squire. Easy to forget, people actually thought we'd manage it, the signalman muses. He stuffs the envelope under one arm. All done, he says, clambering back aboard. Oh, we can read the ledger. Oh, we're here, we might as well. We gained two sky stories. Ooh -doo. I think I've read this before. Captain Abernathy deposited fuel. The pen leaked as they wrote. In miscellaneous notes. The captain warns of a condition afflicting her crew. It started during a period of downtime. One took up gazing at the stars and encouraged the others into consideration of the heavens. This has since become a fixation, and the entire crew only grudgingly leaves the window to perform their labours. We can leave? Now I'm pretty sure that's all of them. Oh, before I speak to the, uh... Attack of the Scouts getting the crap kicked out of it. I am going to deposit the prospect at Leadbeaters and Stainrods, and I, get, I guess I'll talk to him when I get there. It's safer that way. Never know, might get lucky and he wants to actually go to Lead Beater and Stain Rods. Uh, well, we're getting free food, I suppose. And we're going to get there relatively quick, aren't we? Let's hope we don't crash. Ride the wind. Oh, crap. Excuse me. Excuse me. Coming through. Oh, God. Perfectly fine. See, nothing to worry about. Yeesh. Okay. So I'm gonna dock here, then we will sell our barrels of unseasoned hours. Unless I misread this name as well, in which case then we won't. There we go. Quick buck. Are they seriously selling? God damn it. I'm gonna sell them, then I'm gonna buy more. Oh, we got an otherworldly artifact at the same time. Let's buy three of those. Um, right, let's talk to our fatalistic signalman. Ask if he's satisfied with the state of the signal boxes. You have visited each of the four Isenbard line signal boxes as he has requested. He is in his cabin, surrounded by the notes and pages of his unfinished signalling catalogue. A dim light illuminates the scribbling path of his pen on a fresh page. His pace has increased recently. Aye, a good job, well done. But if you'll excuse me, I have a chapter to finish. As you leave, though, he calls back to you. My lady, his brown eyes affirm. Thank you. I don't know why you bothered, but you did. The signalman needs nothing else from you at the moment. 
in 2000 experience. Be patient. Okay, at some point I'm guessing he's going to ask me to do something else. <laughs> See how his work progresses. He now only leaves his cabin for the performance of his duties. He is polite, but distracted. He is clearly relieved when you signal your impending departure from his cabin. Thank you, my lady. I'll be getting on with this, then. He gestures at the sheaf of papers before him. Though I guess we have to let some time pass. So, I guess on that note, I will end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated, as is everyone who watches these videos. It means an awful lot to me. And as always, I'll see you next time.